be my command! Alakir the Windlord is a classic shaman legendary 3-5 for 8 mana whose card text reads Wind Fury, Charge, Divine Shield, Taunt. According to Hearthpone, the Windlord is used in 31% of all of its shaman decks and is picked 0% of the time in Arena. At this juncture, I would like to point out that clearly Hearthpone's statistics come from some sample size that is too small to be useful, so from now on I don't think I'm going to mention their arena statistics. Anyways, Advocto rates Alakir as good in arena, while Trump rates him as excellent. 3-5 for 8 mana is an abysmal stat line. You definitely have to throw in some seriously juicy card text for me to consider taking this card seriously. Oh wait, what's that? Half the keywords in Hearthstone are on this thing? Okay, I'm listening. But seriously though, even with all those keywords, Alakir isn't really that good in a vacuum. He was long maligned in beta as one of the most disappointing class legendaries uh, that needed a buff of some sort. But Alakir doesn't exist in a vacuum, and there are some shaman cards that make him the type of card that goes into many a competitive mid-range shaman list. These type of cards include Flame Tongue and Rockbiter, and they're cards who would run anyways, and that's the best type of combo in Hearthstone. Cards that work absolutely fine on their own, but combined to let you do something like 12, 18, or even more damage to the enemy hero in one turn. Like I said, Alakir combos with Rockbiter and Flame Tongue. Ideally, you want to save him as a finisher in conjunction with one of those cards, much like Gromash in Warrior. He's pretty good as a late game play to retake the board or as a final taunter to stabilize versus an aggressive deck. It's pretty complicated to know when it's best to play him, but my general advice would be to hold him unless you are at a disadvantage on board, or have or are facing lethal damage. Obviously you should place Alakir next to Flame Tongue Totems most of the time, but don't forget to attack with the minion that's currently next to a Flame Tongue Totem first before dropping Alakir. Remember that Wind Fury does not stack, so wind speakering your Alakir will unfortunately do nothing. The most important synergies with Alakir are attack buffs, as they double in strength whenever they're used on him. Youthful Brewmaster is okay with Alakir, I guess, as you can get him back with Divine Shield and ready to charge onto the board again the next turn. But it's not really constructed worthy combo in my opinion. Crazed Alchemist and Reversing Switch can get Alakir up to doing 10 damage per turn instead of just 6. Farsight is acceptable if you have a bunch of really high cost minions or spells like Alakir in your shaman deck. And with Alakir in particular, it can potentially get you a Alakir version that's more cheap so that you can combo him with double flame tongue, double rock biter or something like that. But that's way too random to count on. Reincarnate can essentially give Alakir mega wind fury for a turn. We spell stopper can keep mages from pinging off the wind lord's divine shield as well as fend off hard removal like Siphon Soul and Polymorph. It's an interesting combo, but altogether too expensive for Constructed in my opinion. Alakir already has all the buffs that Enhanceo Meccano attempts to give a minion, so it's mostly a wash to use those two cards together. Mogor the Ogre is often crippling to Alakir's usefulness. Wailing Soul is already bad with totems, but it's also terrible with Alakir. I suggest just not playing him in any shaman deck. Blessing of Wisdom is good against most Wind Fury cards, but Alakir is so often used as a finisher that it will rarely save you. Blood Knight is great against Divine Shield minions, but Alakir is going to attack and lose his Divine Shield before you can react to it in 90% of your games. Most of Alakir's power comes from his card text, so Silence is pretty powerful against him. The upcoming but unreleased card, Rend Blackhand, is a hard counter if Alakir comes out onto the board without killing you. It's hard to get more value out of a Shadow Madness than with taking an Alakir. Shadow Word Pain can kill an 8 mana legendary for 2 mana, which is not bad. The Black Knight counters him, I don't think there's any explanation needed for that. Minions that just get in the way of lethal combos like Anoyotron and Sludge Belcher are pretty good against Alakir decks. No one card can really replace all the things that Alakir brings to the table. In my opinion, the most important function that Alakir serves is the burst damage, so I'd replace him with Doomhammer if you have it. And if you're already putting a Doomhammer in your deck, a second one is not actually as bad as it sounds, because it lets you draw the burst with more consistency. If you're looking to replace the minion aspect of Alakir, you can really just go with your favorite big dude in your collection. 
I would say Sunwalker is a fine replacement, or even Boulder Fist Ogre. So to show off Alakir, obviously we're going to be looking at a Shaman deck. The one I've chosen is uh, one made by Strife Crow. I saw him playing it on stream a couple uh, days ago. I think I'll just go through it card by card here. One Earthshock. Earthshock's just a, a fine Shaman card. Sometimes you need the one damage, sometimes you need the silence, sometimes you need both. Good utility. Two Rockbiter weapons. Those are a key card with Alec here because that's essentially six damage for one mana. You thought Fireball was good? Check out that combo. But it's also a good utility card, you know. Doing three damage for one mana to some uh, minion early game is a really strong play. Two Zombie Chows, this is just to fend off early aggression. And also, having little guys on the board is particularly good in Shaman because you got Flame Tongue Totem. You want to maintain board presence and having one drops that are really sturdy like this goes well towards that. One Crackle, Crackle is just good removal or also good burst damage as well. It's pretty random and it does overload you so Maybe two of them is not great, but one of them will work. Flame Tongue Totem, uh, like I said, it's good with all the little minions that Shaman has. It's good with the totems. Uh, just a standard card in Shaman. Haunted Creeper, again a sticky minion that combos with Flame Tongue Totem. Feral Spirits, another great Shaman class card. It sort of goes in and out, but it is a really solid card. Definitely helps keep you alive against aggressive decks. Two Hexes. Hex is just an amazing card, one of the best hard removal cards in the game. Lightning Storm, a really great board clear, unfortunately pretty random. Harvest Golem, another good sticky minion. Manatide Totem, Shaman's main problem as a class, most people say, is that it runs out of card draw, so one Manatide Totem is good, two might be pushing it because it doesn't uh, have any attack, so it can't affect the board really well. Fender of Argus, uh, Defender of Argus does require two minions to be on the board to get full value out of them, so putting two of them in there might be too many, so we just have one. Piloted Shredder, it's a really good mid-game card. I'm not sure why Strife only put one in there. Azure Drake, again, it helps with card draw. Spell damage is good in Shaman because you usually have a lot of spells, although this one actually doesn't have that many. Harrison Jones, uh, there's a lot of oil rogues in the meta right now, so... Harrison Jones is a really good choice as a tech card. Lotheb, again, there's a lot of oil rogues in the meta. Sludge Belcher, good for keeping you alive, good for maintaining board control. Just a great card. Fire Elemental, maybe the best shaman card. Like I've said in other episodes, I really like cards that clear the opponent's board and develop your board at the same time, and that's what Fire Elemental does really efficiently. Dr. Boom, just a card that goes in every mid or late game deck right now. Neptalon, again, Shaman runs low on card draw typically, and Neptalon is actually card draw. Uh, if you forget about the Murloc part, Neptalon is like an Ancient of Lore that draws two extra cards but has Overload but also is plus two plus two stronger than Ancient of Lore. Now that's a really tortured analogy but Murlocs are cards and they do refill your hand with something to play. So you don't have to play Neptalon in a Murloc deck. It goes absolutely fine in a mid-range deck. And Alakir, the card that uh, this episode is about. Things it combos with, Flame Tongue Totem and Rockbiter Weapon can go Alakir, Rockbiter, Rockbiter, that's 18 damage to their face, or just Alakir, Rockbiter, that is 12 damage to their face. If you have a Flame Tongue Totem down, that adds 4. There's all kinds of math you can do, but just suffice it to say, this is what allows you to use Alakir as a really great finisher in this deck. Alright, so let's take this deck into ranked and see how we do. Okay, we're against a Hunter. Um, we really want Zombie Chow against Hunter, and we didn't even have to mulligan for it. It's already in our hand, so that's excellent. Haunted Creeper is also good against Hunter. We can kill all those one health minions they have lying around. You know, shamans can't ping with their hero power. Can't do one damage, but Haunted Creeper can do one damage for you. Turn what a web spinner, uh, pretty standard hunter start. He looks like he's continuing to think uh, there should be no reason for that because he doesn't have the coin. Yeah, okay, maybe he just has some connection issues or something. We play a zombie chow. We we're planning on doing that anyway. We could have coined out the creeper, but there's no reason to do that. Um, we want to save the coin to do a turn three shredder if we can. Turn to Haunted Creeper, that's uh, not too scary. We can probably just leave it alone uh, for now. 
He might be able to hound master it on turn four, but as far as turn three, we'll just let it be. Okay, so pretty obvious, just Haunted Creeper. I guess we have the option to Totem as well. Um, yeah, I don't think Totem's better. I think you need to uh, push for a stronger board when you can as Shaman instead of trying to max out the uh, value and opportunity opportunity costs on your totems or whatever. He silences our uh, creeper. Uh, not not really what I'd call a devastating use of an owl, but uh, that's probably the best option he has. It's probably more just to put a 2-1 on the board as opposed to uh, silencing the creeper that was his goal there. And a young dragon hawk. I wasn't paying attention. I assume that came off the web spinner. Otherwise, he's running a pretty interesting deck here. So we probably do want to kill the Dragonhawk because next turn is a um, Houndmaster turn potentially, and uh, you really don't want him to Houndmaster a Wind Fury Beast. So he plays a Shredder, uh, pretty standard turn four play. Uh, that may mean he does not have a Houndmaster in hand. Actually, yeah, I'm pretty sure he would have played a Houndmaster over a Shredder there, so... Uh, we don't have to be so... Um, so careful about killing beasts anymore, I would say. And here, the only things we can do are Totem and Flame Tongue. I roll a Taunt Totem, which is the best Totem to get with Flame Tongue. And uh, I, since I did get a... Uh, Taunt Totem, I decided to just go ahead and put the Flame Tongue down now that it's defended. Okay, so he decides to do trades I would expect. He's going to trade his two um, Spectral Spiders into the um, Taunt Totem, and most likely he's going to put his Shredder into the Flame Tongue. And that he does. Well, okay, yeah, there he goes. So. Maybe the playing the flame tongue there was questionable since he was able to kill it so easily and it didn't uh, end up doing much for us. But I guess it did take out two spectral spiders essentially and it gave us two extra damage to his face. Eh. I don't know. I'm, I'm not the best shaman player in the world. I don't know if that was right, but we did it. Alright, he kill commands the belcher for three. Um, oh, and now you can see he's mousing over his hero. Maybe he was, maybe that was a mistake. Maybe he was thinking about saying, a, saying an oops there. That's, I try to make reads. That's probably pretty inaccurate, but maybe he thought that would be five damage and he was disappointed. So... He used a kill command and attacked with everything to clear the Sludge Belcher, that's why it's such a good card. Uh, it does leave us with an awkward trade, because uh, we'd have to run our 4-3 into his 3-2 if we wanted to. Or we can Lightning Storm, uh, which is guaranteed to kill both the things he has out there. Unfortunately, Lightning Storm doesn't let us develop any other threats. All we can do past that is Totem, but I decided to go for it anyway. He gets a Mad Scientist off of his Shredder, which I'm assuming he's playing Secrets, so that's actually like one of the, if not the best uh, two drops he could get right there. And it trades with the um, Shredder that I have really cleanly, so pretty good form there. He actually opts to trade the Scientist into the 1-1, one -one, so he must have some way to deal with the Shredder. Um, or else he really um, is just really trying to max his value here. I don't know, because now my Shredder can trade into his Shredder. That doesn't seem right to me. But he may have a, a plan. We don't see all of his cards, so it's really hard to judge other players on whether their plays were good or bad. Uh, so here the question is, do I want to trade or go face? And this, I think, is a, a big misplay I made here. 
I should have traded with the shredder. Um, I was kind of of the mindset of that you want to put pressure on the hunter when you can. A lot of people play way too passively against hunter. But the thing is, he's probably going to get a freezing trap out of that mad scientist. Um, in fact, now that I think about it, that's why he left our shredder alive. He's going to get a freezing trap off of that scientist. So he wanted to freeze our shredder. Um, and there we had the opportunity to, instead of letting him freeze our shredder, we could have attacked with our shredder first. And then we would have gotten um, whatever dropped from the shredder frozen instead, assuming it's something that is able to attack, unlike Nat Pagel or uh, Cho, I think is the other zero attack thing. So we made a misplay there. Um, we were, I was criticizing him for doing a weird trade with his mad scientist, and actually it was me that was wrong this whole time. So. That's a little unfortunate. Um, here we're pretty much left with no choice but to um, lie in the bed we've made for ourselves and let our shredder get frozen. The upside is that we do get to kill his glaive Zuko with a Harrison. That's not nearly as good as getting a, an eagle horn bow with multiple charges, but uh, you can't be too choosy with Harrison, um, in my opinion. especially when you're behind on board and stuff. I guess Lothab would have been okay there, but I just really wanted to get that two damage off of his uh, hero. So he kill commands my face again. The frog is a beast. So he did get max damage off the kill command that time. And this hunter is uh, being really aggressive now, which I think is the right play for him. Luckily we do have an Argus, so we can uh, stop that aggression pretty pretty well here. And he's down to no cards in hand, so we're not we're not really playing around anything really. You know, Unleash might would be pretty bad here, but I'm not gonna play around it because he hasn't he doesn't have any cards that he's been holding, so his top deck could be anything. He gets his belcher and he gets a I would say a pretty good knife hit there. He's just going to hero power. And we're on a clock now. We have 8 health. And he does at least 2 damage per turn. So we're on a 4 turn clock, but we do have Alakir. So uh, we can speed up that clock significantly here. Um, question is, do we have lethal? I guess is the first question. I'm counting it up now, and I think we're like one or two off lethal. Uh, so we can't lethal him, but an important thing about Alakir that often isn't that important, but is important in this scenario, is that he is a taunt. So we can put on a uh, fourth taunt on the board, which would mean he pretty much has to kill us with direct damage. So, we want that extra taunt, so we put down Alakir, and um, since we're going to throw down Alakir, we might as well put the Rock Biter on him and put him down to one health. So, I don't know what outs he could possibly have here. It looks like we're going to win this game, I hope. Okay, and our opponent roped the entire time, and it turns out he quit the game or whatever. So, we won. Uh, I think it was a pretty good demonstration of Alakir as... A finisher, although it didn't quite finish, and also as the safety that he gives you as a taunter. Like sweating insects!